The Entrepreneur's Library, episode 167. Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Library, the only book-centric podcast that reviews all the top-selling business books and shares authors' perspective firsthand. This is your resource to finding the next great book that will enable you to grow personally and professionally. Welcome your host, Wade Danielson. Welcome back to the EL. Today we have Carson Tate, author of Work Simply, Embracing the power of your personal productivity style. This was again, you know, I like to highlight some of my my favorite books, favorite authors that we have on here. And Carson is one of the the nicest, sweetest uh, ladies that we've had on the show, or or individuals in in general, not just ladies that we've had on the show. And uh, and the way you know, there's so many productivity books out there, but the personalized aspect of it, the she she takes it from a different angle, and I really appreciate. Um, you know, original, original material or a new way, you know, we're, again, we always ask the question about the paradigm shift. Um, and that's what I'm always seeking as, as a business owner is that next, that next paradigm shift. So I think you guys are going to enjoy it. And without further, uh, further ado, let's bring on Carson. Welcome Carson. And thank you for joining us on the entrepreneur's library. Thanks, Wade. I'm thrilled to be with you. Before we take a deep dive into work simply, will you take just a moment to introduce yourself? Tell us just a little bit about you personally. Sure, absolutely. So I am the owner and founder of a call of a company called Working Simply. And that is both my personal mission as well as my company's mission to help individuals and teams and organize organizations streamline and simplify their workflow so that they have more time, more money, so they're more profitable, and also have more meaning in their lives. So Carson, thank you for, for, for sharing that with us first off. And now let's take a deep dive into that book, Work Simply, which was just made available for purchase uh, January 2nd. Let me actually bring up the, the subtitle there, Embracing the Power of Your Personal Productivity Style. And again, which was just made available for purchase January 2nd, 2015. And Carson, we're going to move quickly, but our whole goal here today is to help that future reader really understand what your book's all about, really help them understand if this is their next great read. And so we have a couple of questions that'll, that'll help them do that. And the first one is, what was the inspiration behind writing Work Simply? So I am very privileged to have the opportunity to work with really high achieving entrepreneurs and business owners. And as I was working with them to help them be more efficient, more effective, and these folks are driven and they really are looking for ways to up their game. And so as they reached out to me, what I was finding is they were struggling in trying to adopt and adapt some of the time management, productivity, best practices in the marketplace. So they were feeling frustrated and overwhelmed because the latest and greatest app or the latest and greatest you know, blog post that they read wasn't working for them. So they're frustrated, they're overwhelmed, they're short on time. And so my aha was, it's not a lack of motivation and drive. It's that the tools that they're using aren't aligned to the way they think. But see, the whole premise around time management training and productivity training is really this one-size-fits-all approach. So here's the tool, you use it this way, then you're going to be productive. But we all think differently. So if you're more of a linear analytical thinker, why am I going to suggest that you use mind mapping tools? That's not right for you. So I wanted to write a book that helped people identify the way they think and then align their thinking styles to the way they actually work so that they could be more productive and be more discerning in the tools and resources that they use personally as well as in their business. So what would you say, I love this question because it really helps this entrepreneur figure out whether, you know, what makes your book different. So what makes your book different from the others regarding the same or similar topic? Mm -hmm. So the key differential, let's say for my book, is that it is based on this concept that I developed called productivity style. So in the book, you take an assessment to determine your thinking style which I call your productivity style. And once you discern your type, there are four different types, then the rest of the book, you really customize strategies and tools based on your type. So there isn't a one-size-fits-all approach. So if you're looking to better manage your inbox and you are, let's say, one of the types of, of an arranger, 
you're going to go to that section in the book, read strategies for you, and not worry about the rest. So it's a really efficient tool as well because it's aligned the way you think. And then the book is designed for you to get in and out, get what you need, get out, apply, get back in and find something else you need, and then get back out. So that's perfect because my next question uh, and you can, I guess maybe you can just reemphasize is how do you suggest the reader engage with your book? Read it from front to back, you know, the way it is designed or jump in and jump out, cherry picking information. So I, I think you covered that, but do you have anything further to say on that? I would say I absolutely do not recommend that you read my book uh, front to back. I would suggest that you go in. I have got a really detailed table of contents as well as a mind map and that you go to the chapter or chapters in the book that speak to your current challenge or issue, and you read that content. Hmm. It is highly accessible. You don't have to read everything to understand the concepts. You can take what you need and get out. You know, Carson, it's, it's, it took me a while to actually be able to sell out to doing that. And I think it was just the sheer amount of books that are coming out that I knew that with 10 lifetimes, I couldn't actually read them all. And yes. that also with, with, if you're really talking about productivity, it would not be reading a 500 page book in which you need 50 pages out of it. Um, because I used to fight that, that, you know, I like knocking books off my list. And to me, that meant reading, uh, everything within that book and me reading 50 pages, um, you know, is not me reading, reading the book, I guess it would say. So it took me a while to transition my mind to really say, Hey, it's okay to jump in and jump out. You do it on websites and blogs and everything else that you do to get information, Googling, you know, but for some reason with that, that book, I fought that for a while. So I think it's fantastic that you created your book that way. And I think that more authors will continue to do that as well. I, I think, Wade, it is so important for the reader, my ideal reader, which is a high achieving, busy entrepreneur, to be able to access what they want quickly and easily, learn something and apply it all in under 15 minutes. And we're all pressed for time. So I need to deliver value quickly and efficiently. And so that's how I designed the book. Excellent. So Carson, now that we've, we know a little bit of the background, the purpose behind the book, uh, this is really one of my favorite parts of the interview where I want to, uh, you know, hand you the proverbial mic and allow you to take the next five to eight, maybe even 10 minutes to, to give us a deep dive, give the, the listener slash future reader a great idea of what they can expect to get out of your book. So will you, will you take the next couple of minutes and do that for us? Absolutely. Thank you. So in work simply starting with the productivity style assessment. So early on in the book, there is a chapter on what is your productivity style, why does it matter, and how to identify it. So as a starting place, I would suggest that you start with this chapter. You would be able to take the assessment. It's in the book. It's also online as well, because that's providing that foundational piece for you, that understanding of how you think and how you're going to use that to align to your workflow strategies. Then the book moves into the areas that I think most of us really struggle with in our businesses. So there's a chapter on managing your attention. So in our 24-7, always connected world, how do you manage your attention so that you're able to focus on your goals and your priorities? And this chapter looks at how do you control against distractions? How do you manage emergencies? And I'm, I'm using air quotes around that. And also, how do you manage your technology? Then the book moves on to setting priorities. Now, this is nothing new. Everybody knows about setting priorities. But I introduce a new framework here that I call ready goals. And these goals are, are slightly different than how we, most of us have been taught around SMART goals and that they're realistic they're exciting or energizing. You actually want to do them. They're very action-oriented. They're directive. So they point you in the direction that you want to go. And ultimately, they're yours. So it's not your investors. It's not your spouses. It's not societies. These are your goals. And so once you've focused and identified how you're going to really manage your attention, and then you move into the sec second section, looking at setting your priorities, now you're clear. 
So now in the book, I look very specifically at the challenges that we face. So how do you invest your time wisely? How do you free your brain and build a really effective master task list? How do you get more done? So how are you completing projects and tasks with ease? And then how do you tame your inbox? And then shaping your space. How do you shape your physical environment, regardless of where you work, even if that's working out of your car or a bag? How do you shape that for optimal performance and optimal productivity? And then I conclude this section of the book with a a chapter on paper and paper management. Now, each of those sections starts with some best practices because there are some foundational best practices. But as I mentioned earlier, each one of them has very specific strategies for you based on your productivity style. So there are strategies, there are recommendations around technology tools, there are recommendations around low-tech tools. And each of those chapters has very detailed charts that make it very easy to quickly access the information. And then I also have most of the charts and quick reference guides that are in the book or downloadable from the website. Then the third part of the book, so if the first part of the book is really exploring productivity style and identifying it, and the second part of the book is how are we going to manage the challenges and the realities of our workplace really effectively, the third part of the book is how can you work more effectively with others? Because we're all interdependent. You know, we, at least growing up, I was very excited to be independent Well, as you move into adulthood, you recognize that we're interdependent. So this section looks at how can you harness the productive power of your teammates? So how do you delegate effectively? So it gives you some really nice pull-out charts on productivity style clues and cues. So you can identify the style of your direct reports, the style of your investors, the style of your vendors, so that you can more effectively delegate and ultimately communicate with them. Then there's a section on working well with others, why we have what I call these productivity style clashes and what to do about them. So this is where you have that colleague and every time you engage on a project, it's just hard and you're frustrated. Well, you understand that clash is because you think differently and then there's some very specific strategies to you can adopt so that you work more effectively with others. And then the final piece in this team section is around meetings and how do you get work done in and through meetings and how do you communicate in meetings so that everyone on your team is heard. And then I end the book with just a really high level summary Um, So you can pull out the salient nuggets they've done. They're kind of done in the back part of the book for you and that you can take away what you want. I've also included in the book a detailed mind map that's right before the introduction. And the way I've set up this mind map is it's a problem solution set. So, for example, you might say I've got I'm struggling with I need a few more hours in my day. And then you would find that on the mind map, and then it would point you to the direction, the pages, and the chapters that are going to support you um, in solving that problem. So, Carson, you did a fantastic job of taking us through and really giving us a great idea of what we can expect to get out of your book. And and this next question I, I feel like is somewhat mean because it's taking it what you just said and even putting it into <laughs> we already put it in a nutshell and now I'm asking you to, I guess put it in an even smaller nutshell so that's if the reader can only take away one concept principle or action item out of everything you just talked to us about and your entire book what would you want that to be personalize your productivity and will you expand on that just a little bit personalize yep. so um, decide to no longer accept a one-size-fits-all solution for your time or your email or your communication challenges, push back, understand your thinking style, and then rigorously filter and, and only allow in those strategies and tools that are in alignment with you hmm. and the way that you work. So you're going to have a very personalized 
I'd say, tailored approach to the way that you work. It's custom productivity. I want you to start customizing your productivity. That, that, that's actually, I'm not, I've never heard it put like that. And that's actually, uh, there are several quote worthy things that you just said. And that's our, that's our next question as well is, do you have a favorite quote from your book, something that you wrote? And um, can you, can you let us know what it means to you? Sure. Uh, my favorite quote in the book is every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Mm. So for me personally, I have struggled in the past, and this is still my learning edge. Or um, I like to be engaged. I like to support people. And the recognition that when I am saying yes, I am saying no potentially to some of my goals. I could be saying no to my family. And some of those unintentional no's come, from, come with some pretty significant consequences. Excellent. And again, we'll reference that in the show notes so people can go back and actually reflect on that uh, a little bit more uh, since, since most of them are mobile. But uh, the last question I have for you today, Carson, is if there's only one book you could recommend based on the way that it's impacted your life, maybe created a, a paradigm shift or a lifestyle shift, what book would you recommend? You know, I would recommend uh, Greg McEwen's book, Essentialism. Mm. It is very well written and such a refreshing commentary on how we have succumbed to what he calls the non-essential life where everything is important and we say yes to everything and the rigorousness around thinking really hard about I'm only going to say yes to the essential few has really challenged me personally and professionally and I don't you know my work is helping people create the space so that they can then do what? So you have more time and more energy. My question to them is, so what? Mm -hmm. And I think Greg starts to answer that question, so what, as you start to get really clear on what's important to you. That, that book's been recommended. It's been recommended a couple of times on here, but, but uh, you know, between Amazon, all the different ways you can have a book recommended to you. Uh, I've heard so much about that book and it, it's, it's definitely on my super, my, my super short list as far as to, to get read because it's now been referenced so many times. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And that, that again, that's a new, I, I've looked at it several times. It's 2014, right? I mean, right. literally it's within really fresh. And you can imagine, um, I love to read books in the productivity space. Let's say I'm a little bit of a productivity book junkie. I will not share with you how many I have read and reread. And when I think about the you know, the freshest ideas and the ones that have really challenged me the most and made me the most uncomfortable, which is a good thing, it's his book. Mm. No, that's fantastic. So Carson, before we depart, will you give us a great idea of uh, or the best way for our listeners to get more information on you and your book, Work Simply? Absolutely. So the best way to get more information would be my website, which is carsontate.com. So to reach out, to connect, to learn more about the book, uh, download some of the quick reference guides and additional resources that are available to support the book. They're all available at carsontate.com. You can also go to carsontate.com and take an online productivity style assessment. So if you have maybe a spouse or direct reports or colleagues that you want to take the assessment, they can go there and take it for free. You have access to it. The other thing that you have access to that might be of value is I have an ebook, very short. It's my 99 essential tips to work simply and live fully. Very simple, easy, practical things that you can implement in five minutes or less. And then there's also available on there a course to help you tame your inbox. Busy entrepreneurs typically are drowning in their inboxes. So this is a powerful, very effective, but short course to help you take back control. Excellent. Is that, is that ebook that you were talking about, is that on that site as well as Amazon? It is on that site. It is not on Amazon. The okay. book is available on Amazon. Um, and we can um, make sure we can link to it in the show notes for you if that would help your listeners. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We'll definitely uh, put the link in there so they can they can head that way. That sounds like a fantastic resource. Carson, thank you so much 
for coming on today and sharing your, many times we call it your baby because we know how much time authors put into it. And uh, after about episode, we're on episode about 167 right now. And after I think episode three, I had asked the authors when their, when their next book was coming out. And I've never asked again because of how, how it was received. Like I, why, why did you just ask me that? I just got <laughs> done right. Like, and so at not being an author myself yet, I, it's uh I soon realized that's a bad question to ask someone who just got done writing a book. But uh, but thank you for coming on and sharing your book, your baby with us. <laughs> well, thank you. I have to say, wait, I do feel a little bit like I did after my last marathon. So I'm glad you didn't answer. <laughs> Ask me about the next book. It's coming. I'm working on it, but woo, I'm still a little tired. My legs yeah. are a little dead right now. <laughs> no, that's fantastic. Thank you again. Thanks. I so appreciate the opportunity. Thanks again for listening in today. If you'd like more information on Carson or her book, Work Simply, check out the show notes at the elpodcast.com. And if you want an opportunity to win this book, Carson's book, or uh, the books that we that we discuss daily or five days a week, uh, go to the elpodcast.com and become a VIP. Looking for your next book idea? Head over to the elpodcast.com, where Wade shares his amazing resource, the top 10 business books recommended by over 500 entrepreneurs with you for free. That's the elpodcast.com. Till the next time, keep it on the EL.